The NC State men's soccer team is one of the most diverse teams that we have here on campus. A lot of the student athletes, not only do they come from a lot of different states here in the U.S., but even a lot of countries are represented on the roster. And a lot of the stories of how these guys came to Raleigh to play for the Wolfpack, very unique. And one story we're going to dive into today is that of rising sophomore forward Tony Temple. Tony, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having me. Where are we talking to you today, and who has been around you during this time? Um, I am from Millville, Pennsylvania. That is where I currently am at this time with my family, with, my, uh, with the Temple family. And uh, we're all just trying to stay safe and uh, healthy, I guess. I was going to say, this past season at NC State, it was your first here on campus in Raleigh. How did you adjust to having to pick up, move back home mid-semester? Not only was it during your middle of the semester, but it was during your spring season. So how have you adapted to not being here on campus anymore? Um, not being on campus makes you actually miss it that much more. Like having to adjust to online classes is a lot more difficult personally for me, because I'm, I'm a student who likes to learn from others in person. And so having that taken away is a huge adjustment and it's diffi more difficult, I think. You list your hometown as Millville, PA, but that is just part of the story of you coming to NC State. You were born outside the U.S., adopted by your family up there in Millville. Can you talk about your journey to the U.S. and your childhood? Yeah, I'm from Monrovia, Liberia, uh, which is on the western coast of Africa. Um, I don't remember too much from my, from being there, but I remember I was, there was a civil war going on at the time and I had to be separated from my biological mother when I was about two years old to be put in an orphanage. So I spent about three years in the orphanage before I was adopted by the Temple family. And that was all thanks to God, I believe, and um, the help of a missionary family known as the Zackies, who helped me, who helped with the transition process. And that all occurred, uh, I believe, 2005, summer of 2005. And that's when I was first introduced to my adoptive family. Have you done research about your roots or where you grew up and anything about the country, about your family or anything? I have done research in the past, even in high school, I had to do a couple research projects and I decided to do, to talk about like the culture of Liberia itself and what was going on during the time I was there and how I am very fortunate. And now that, now looking back at it, I know that I'm very fortunate to be here. Because honestly, I'd, if I didn't get adopted, I'd probably be dead somewhere in the middle of the streets of Liberia. So I'm very fortunate to be where I am today. Do you have a desire to go back and kind of see things and just kind of revisit? I know you don't remember it too much, but just to go back and see, experience it? I mean, yeah, of course. That's always been somewhere in my mind to go back. Um, but I have to make it here first as because I'm giving a second chance of life. So I have to find my career path. And whenever I become, whenever I find out what I want to do, I definitely want to go back because, I mean, I want to s see my roots and my biological mother someday is my hope. And um, yeah, I still have family back there. So it's always been on my mind to go back at some point. Have you been able to communicate with your family back there? Um, we used to when I was younger, but we kind of fell out of communication. So I haven't talked to them in a while. How are the Temple family, a different experience for you? How, how has it been them taking you in and just obviously treating you as their own? Nah, obviously I'm very thankful and grateful for their selfless act that they had to adopt a poor orphan boy from nothing. So yeah, I'm very thankful to be where I am today and they don't treat me any different than their 
biological children, so I fit in right away. I think a lot of soccer fans know, but a lot of casual fans might not know, uh, elite recruits like yourself, not your typical high school player, yeah. you guys travel all over the U.S., uh, you don't play for your high school team, you yourself have a lot of different experiences. Can you kind of talk about your high school years playing soccer here? Uh, yeah, it's been a journey for sure. Um, like I said, I was adopted, but I left home when I was 13 years old to pursue my soccer career. Um, not too far from home. I just left my small town to go to Philadelphia. Um, all thanks to John Hackworth, who has been played a big part in my um, development as a soccer player. He saw potential in me, so he took me to the Philadelphia Union Professional Academy, where I first started my um, competitive youth career. Um, so I played there in 2013 to 2015. Um, the first year I was living by myself in a residency family in Philly. And shortly after the second year there, they decided to bring my parents and my family with me. So they got us a house, a residency house. And so my parents were the residency parents. So we got to live that experience for a little bit and it was nice to connect back with my family, have that um, family aspect again. But sadly, shortly after, um, in 2015 was when I was diagnosed with a heart disease. Um, known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's what a lot of athletes have died from. So that was a big scare in my career. So I thought my um, soccer playing career was over at age 14. So pretty much I had to sit out like the whole year, run a lot of tests. I wasn't allowed to do anything. And then I was lucky, I was able to luckily get a second and a third opinion at Tufts University Hospital in Boston. Um, and they decided that everything looked normal, like with my um, blood flow and everything, my heart, it, the doctors were just scared because it was enlarged and different than the average kids, I guess. So um, they decided to just call it athlete's heart. And luckily I was able to pursue my dream of playing soccer but because it is an enlarged heart and it was a bit of a scare I still have to see the doctor once a year to make sure everything's still running normally and smoothly. I was gonna say what drew you to NC State to come and play for the Wolfpack? Um, honestly it was, that was a process as well I didn't think I was going to college until my senior year like my dream was always to pursue professional soccer because I left home at such a young age and I sacrificed a lot for the sport. So my thought was just to go pro. But it wasn't until my senior year where I got in contact with um, head coach George Kiefer and Jeff and assistant coach Jeff Nagaya. And they told me they set up everything and got me a visit to come to school. And after visiting the school, I just fell in love with, for one, the staff, the, both the um, athletic staff and the academic staff, because I felt at home because they could, um, I felt at home right away because I knew they were going to help me develop both as a man and as a soccer player. And I say as a man because they, um, for Coach Keeper, it's always academic first. So he emphasized that right on my visit, and I knew that it was more than so that life is more than soccer, and I have to get a degree at some point as well. So that's why I knew NC State was the best decision. And also, like after my visit, my parents told me to like wait because I wanted to commit right away. Um, so head coach George Kiefer actually decided to come fly home to Millville, Pennsylvania, my small town, to talk to my parents. And um, after their meeting. I finally got the okay from my parents to commit, and I did did that right away as uh, Keeper was going back to North Carolina. How would you assess your freshman season? Uh, 
like you said, it was an adjustment period. Um, I'm a competitive person, so I went in with the mindset that I was going to be starting right away, which was not the case. So I had to adjust, and I know that soccer is a team sport, so I just had to be patient and wait my turn. And I just tried my best every time I got an opportunity to play, whether I came on as a sub or started a game. And I just, when I was, when I was on the bench, I just tried to cheer on my team because, like I said, it's a team sport. Obviously, different time here. You're not here training. You're not going to be here for summer school. How are you going to get ready for fall camp? Um, yeah. My first focus was obviously my academics to try to get all that done online. And I've had help, but it, like I said, it's a lot harder to do it online than in person. So with my tutoring appointments, I make sure to make all those on time and um, just use all my resources. And my siblings are brilliant too, like academically. So I have their help in the process of getting school done. And as far as staying fit, I make sure to go to the field, like my high school field, once every day. And um, if I'm not there, I make sure to get a workout in myself here. Tony, I want to thank you. Thanks for sharing your story. Definitely a different upbringing. Uh, you've seen a lot during your time and appreciate you and can't wait to see you back on the soccer field here at NC State. Thank you very much. And I can't wait to be back.